All right, guys, Jay here, and today I'm going to show you how to switch out the XP600 or the F1080 Epson print head. And uh, to do this, let's get a screwdriver and shut the machine down. So we've determined we got a bad print head. That can be done in a few ways, and I'll actually put a link into the description or a card up here to show you a, a video on how to determine if you have a good print head or not. Okay, first thing we're going to do is remove the red cover here by removing these two screws and then loosening the screws around the edges. Ones around the uh, top here don't need to come out, just need to be loosened. And then we can fold this up. Okay, I actually like to move the print head over just a little bit to relieve the pressure from the uh, ink pad from the bottom of the print head. Next step we're gonna do is we actually need to pull the dampers out. Now when you pull the dampers out, it's gonna leak or dribble just a little bit of ink. So I like to have some plastic wrap or something to take into consideration that that's gonna leak out. If you guys wanna go ahead and take a picture or something so you get the uh, way the, uh, the dampers are installed here to make sure that they, uh, you put your dampers in back the same way. Okay, so we take the dampers out one by one here. I'm just loosening them. All you have to do is just grab a hold of them with two fingers and wiggle and they pop right out. And then we'll take all your dampers and we'll put them in this plastic wrap, like so. Now a Phillips head screwdriver will be needed to take out these four screws. This one. A lot of people make the mistake and take out this metal plate. Don't take that out. Just take out these four screws. upside down and take your uh, wires out. All right, so we have a uh, front head here. You can see the four screws that we took out in the four corners. And then whatever we take out to replace the front head, I always suggest to replace the ribbon cables because the ribbon cables, if they get ink or something on the ribbon cables, they can create a short in the wires or the pins to replace those. So something really important I like to think about is uh, the, on print EXP boards or Hanzo soft boards running the N10 H1 is always your color print head. So if it has CMYK in it, this is a single print head model. So it has CMYK and white white in it. You can see the uh, dampers here. So this is H1 or head one on the board. We'll explain that in a moment. So if you have a two head model, your second head or H2 would be varnish, your varnish ink. And if you have a three head model, H1 is color. H2 is white, H3 is uh, varnish. So when we go in here and look at this board, you'll uh, be able to see why that that's important. We need to know that. All right, so I suggest that we replace these uh, wires. So we need to, to actually snake up in here. And we'll go ahead and take both these wires out. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect this. So we just take this two fingers here, pull this board down, wiggle them out. So you can see right here, the ink sometimes gets down into this. This one's probably okay, because it actually doesn't even be replaced. We're just doing it for the video, but the ink gets down in here and these will delaminate and they need to be replaced frequently. So we get ourselves some new cables here. We got these available uh, um, and I'll put a link in the description below for these. So this is H1 and the reason why that's important that we remember that is because we'll come up here to this board and you'll see right here, H1, that's for head one, or H2, that's for head two. So this one's our color head, which on the XP600 takes two sockets or two cables for a left and a right. And you'll see on the other side of the socket, it says left and right. So this is referring to the left side of the print head and the right side of the print head for CMYK, for H1. So this board supports two heads. And you'll see the 6090s have two more sockets over here. They'll say H3, H4 for the, uh, H3 being your varnish. But anyways, this is a one head machine. So H1 is color, left and right. You'll also notice along these sockets, the metal pins running down this way and this way. That's what we need to make sure our metal pins line up with right here, that they're on the side with those metal pins like this. If we put this in backwards and we put this one in the right way, you'll energize one side of the print head and ruin your print head. So we want to make sure the, the tabs, not the blue side, but the side with the tabs are against the tabs inside the socket. So this one will go in like this. And 
and then this one against these tabs and that socket. You see, we have it going here. And it'll go in here just like this. Okay. And this, so that's hooked up. So now we need to show you how to determine left and right on your printer. Okay, so the print head sits in here like this on our printers. So if you're looking at the machine, it's sitting here like this. So I like to think of it as you're looking at the machine, it's the left side of the print head. This is the right side of the print head or the left side of the printer, the right side of the printer. Uh, it went through sitting like this. So left and right. So this is H1. So we're gonna hook up the H1 left and right. And then you'll notice the same socket here. We need to make sure that the cable, the metal side is touching the metal side. So this is the right side. I'm gonna put it down. I know it's the right side because it says it's the right side and I'm just following it through. They like to actually have them come down underneath that. Now they don't have to be all bent pretty like the manufacturer does. If you want to do a good job like that, that's cool. So this is the right side of the uh, print head because it's the right side of the printer. And then I see the metal tabs, metal tabs, and they'll go in like this. Okay. So we'll let this hang. Now we're going to get the left side. Some models have a rubber gasket that goes on here. It's loose. You can pull off your old print head and slide it back on over this print head. Sometimes it gets stuck down in this socket here. Just make sure it goes back on and uh, we'll put this, uh, the print head in and line it up with those four screw holes. I suggest if you haven't done one of these before, to go ahead and pull your print head over and look up underneath the bottom here and make sure your print head's flush. So you can just shoot up there. Make sure your print head is flush down around the edge of this plate. Sometimes that rubber gasket pops down here and then I've had some customers put these in a little crooked like so the ink cap couldn't seal on there and suck the ink through. All right, this one looks good. All right, so we're gonna open up our dampers here. And we're gonna put them on one by one in the color order that you saw before. So it goes yellow, blue, black. Okay, give them a little push just to make sure they're all in there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put our, go ahead and put our cover back on. Okay, so I like to leave these two screws out when I'm operating. You feel free to put them back in. It looks a little more professional, but you know, probably once a week, you're gonna be opening that up anyway. So I tend to leave them off. Power this thing back on. All right, so it's on. Okay, it's important to note every single time you pull a damper off, you've lost prime on your print head and you need to reload ink, especially on a new print head that's completely empty of ink, it's just full of moisturizer or print head cleaning solution. Uh, so we need to, to load all of that out and we do that simply through the software. Now that the printer is on, we've established a connection, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so now that we're in the software, you'll notice down here we have this green light, that means we are connected. These flashing lights you can kind of ignore, but right now, but I'm low on yellow ink, I just need to top that off. So we'll go to settings. And we have a one-head machine, even though it says a two-head machine, because it is capable of doing two-headed prints. And uh, we'll actually just go to head one, and I'm going to load the ink. You'll hear that loading. That's a good noise. You want to hear it? It's what's doing, it's sucking on the print head to, to bring ink into the uh, printer. And you'll kind of hear it change. Typically, with a new print head, you're about 10, 15 seconds. And then you click stop. And then now we need to um, do a clean. Just a week clean to clean out the um, the ink pad. You could, if you want, do a first inking, but that runs for 45 seconds. I feel like it wastes too much ink when you're um, just doing a print head, but you can do a first inking. Just know it's gonna use a little more ink. All right, so now we gotta do a nozzle check. I've learned to like doing nozzle checks on something clear and something cheap is packaging tape. If you ship a lot of stuff, you got this line around. Just tape that directly to the bed. Go ahead and focus our, our plantum with the, uh, the bottom print head and just hit nozzle, right? 
you don't know how to do the nozzle check either there or in the software you get your nozzle check and let's see how it looks let's pull this off this is why i like to do this on clear because we can see all colors i can see them if you shine through the light i think black might be missing just a little bit but it is printing so therefore i know that it just needs to be loaded a little bit more and then maybe print a color flag and we'll be ready to go.